Hi, today's video is a two of my sewing space, my sewing corner. And if you're interested, please stay tuned. Hi, lovely people, Josie here on It Is Josie. I'm glad to have you here and I'd like to welcome any new subscribers to my channel. You're welcome, Phil at home and my old subscribers. Thank you for always tuning in and watching my videos and I hope you're all doing well. And today is that promised video. I'm going to give you a tour of my sewing corner. You, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I moved from my sewing room. I live in a three bedroom house and the smallest room had been my dedicated sewing room for the last close to three years we've lived in this house because by then my kids were much younger. So they were happy to share a room. They couldn't be split. But fast forward three years later, my son is now nine and my daughter is six and they needed their individual space. So I knew it was the sensible thing to do to give up my sewing room for my son and move into the dining, the family dining space. And this was space that was never put to good use. It always stored boxes. You always look for something to put in those, in those little spaces that are not occupied. And the dining had taken up my space. It's honestly a small table for a family of four. We never have that many guests. If you know about something about us, we moved to England five years ago and moved here. So most of our family is back home in Africa. So we never expect so many guests and the few friends we have who come over rarely have big house parties. So the table, the small table for is more than enough for us. Even for big days when we have guests, we get random chairs and put them somewhere and squeeze out all of, squeeze everybody there. So this is a space that I converted into my sewing space and I could say if I'm to tell you the dimensions, the square area of the place, I've got six, 65 inches by 85 inches. So it's quite small space and I could say the only thing that I don't store here is my fabric. I saw it in the, my old sewing space had a cabinet which I was happy to retain and keep the fabric. Then the rest of the fabric is in beams underneath the beds. So with no further ado, let me give you a, a tour around the sewing space and how, how I've gotten to use some spaces, some cabinets for storage to help me keep everything in one place. Okay, come with me. Okay, this is when you walk into my dining area. I've got the fridge freezer here. So this is my dining space, a small table, quite enough for my family, a small family. And it used to take up this entire space, honestly, it, the table was not pushed to the side. There was a lot of space it took up and didn't need to. So I've made good use of the table, the space. And this is my, den, my sewing corner. I've taken up this other corner and the wall. Give this. Yeah, this is my space. And back to the fridge freezer and I'm going to take you through a few corners I've got some storage space there I've got that big bin that collects everything that I don't know what to use for <laughs> and then I've got a cabinet here similar to the IKEA one but I got this from Hobbycraft then I've got a shelving there and probably I could start by showing you my sewing machines and this is my sewing machine that I've owned for coming to five years yeah this is the genome 8050xl 8050xl it's your basic computer is sewing machine it does everything for me it does good button holds although it misbehaves a little bit but i can't fault it it's a good machine i'm happy with it it's been i'm not planning to replace it anytime from now and this is my brother of a locker. I just replaced this during lockdown a few months ago. I think it's about three months old and it's behaving well, really. I can't fault it at all. And this is the brother 3034DWT. I did an unboxing video of this brother machine. If you're interested, I will add a link here. And I'm happy with it. And I bought it after my singer broke down. And I couldn't get it repaired because during lockdown, the shops were open then. And so I've not gotten around to having it repaired. And this is my cover stitch machine. I don't think people need cover stitch machines, but it's an added luxury. If you love the finished seams on, on t-shirts and knit fabrics. So it comes in handy. I've had to master it. So it does a good job. 
it's the Nechi 4050 Pro Series. Nechi is an Italian brand, it's not a common one, but when I went to buy it, it was one that I could afford. Still, the, uh, the cost wasn't the cheapest, but I was happy to to get that. I know because it's not a common brand, you don't have many accessories that you would buy to, uh, to accompany it, like various feet, but you learn to make do with whatever you have. But these are my trusty machines that I always use. And of course, there is Sally the singer. And she's singer 99K. And she was gifted to me by a lovely friend, Saturday Night Stitch, Sheila from Saturday Night Stitch. It was my Christmas present. She came, she came to my house in January bearing this. And I love this cover. This machine is a workhorse. I've used it a few times and I know many people are interested in more videos about it, threading it. I recorded a threading video. It wasn't an unboxing one, a few things about it, but it, people want more details about it. So I hope to record an, a, few, a series of videos on threading it, clear videos on how to oil it, how to adjust the stitch length and stitch width. I love it. And of course, up here I've got the must-have IKEA pegboard in every sewing room. The good thing I hadn't yet mounted it into my previous sewing room because I didn't know how to put it together. But later when I moved into this space, I was happy to drill it, drill into the wall. It's a concrete wall and with the help of Hubby, we managed to put it together. And over here, both... I bought the the square one. I went back to get another the next time, but they had run out of this size. So I bought the half size, half of that. So it's like one and a half of the pegboard. And I'm happy that they are lined seamlessly properly at the top and at the bottom. And I used this top one for my rulers. Over on my pegboard, I've got these rulers. I've got the curve rulers. What do they call this? This is a curve ruler for curve. It's the French curve for your armholes because I've tried, I'm teaching myself pattern drafting and pattern making. And then I've got these other rollers that help with seams. And I also have this other. This is the, it's the pattern maker also. So I've got two curved rollers for pattern making. And over here, this is just a tray. This is an aromatherapy banner. Sometimes I put a, lead, a few, a candle, a tea light there, a tea light candle and some essential oils there when I need something extra. Then this is my magnetic pin, pin handle. I've got my tape measure here and I've got my washers, pattern weights over here. It helps me store them. Then I love these beautiful small containers. I use this for my needles. And if you can tell, I managed to organize them. Some have come loose because I can't be bothered putting them back in. But I put them in order. I've got these uh, universal needles. And I try to assemble different sizes together. Then I also have over local needles. I've got a twin needle over there. Then I also have jeans needles. I've tried to group them all together. These are jeans needles and ball point needles and overlocker needles. I try to put everything together so I know where to find them. They help with carrying those small things. And I've got my clips here. Clips when you would rather not use pins you can use clips and i've got in this little section i've got hooks snaps spare blades and buttons that are quite many that are in groups i keep them in here so i know what i have so I and over here this is just it collects anything that does can't be put onto the hooks here these hooks have my scissors paper scissors over here cutting scissors rotary cutter this is an old rotary cutter if you've got those old ones that have gone blunt and you don't know what to use them for i use it to cut pe paper patterns 
so when i when i've traced it out or printed it off it comes in handy to cut it with this metallic ruler just in case i'm drawing lines these two come in handy and this is my paper scissors i've got my pinking shears and a few other sh cloth making shears cutting shears then these are my many tape measures and i'm so sure i still have other two brand new ones kept somewhere and this collects my rotary cutter that i use i've got a tracing wheel these are gadgets i bought when i just started sewing and i've got a notcher comes in handy when you're labeling your pattern then i've got a serrated tracing wheel also these come in handy when pattern making and a seam sewing gauge when you're choosing the hem and this also is this i use it also to remind me of projects i might ignore this is a pattern that has just been sent to me by the pattern print preacher they offered me a pattern which i can review and a discount code i'll talk about it in detail probably in my sewing plans video so i've put it there just a reminder that i don't forget about it and also this is a coat gun of some sort it's a pattern i was meant to have sold up last autumn never got around sewing it up so i put it up here to remind me that it's a project that i shouldn't forget about and probably this is more like inspiration for me and i think let's move on still on this at the sewing table i've got this lamp this was a cheap lamp from wilco and it helps mostly nighttime sewing because the light here is not the strongest it's not the brightest so this is added lighting when you're threading and i bought it from my from wilco it was just five pounds and the bulb was four pounds so it was a bargain okay this came with my cover stitch machine i keep my things i need on hand i've got the these are i don't know what they call them but yeah they're for the thread holders on my overlock and cover stitch machine then it comes with the tweezers that i use and the threaders for my cover stitch machine and overlocker so i keep it here because it comes in handy and over here in this corner, this was a planter, but I found it so beautiful to use it to plant herbs. It was a herbs planter, so I use it to store my spare pairs of scissors. I think it might be becoming an addiction, buying so many scissors and keeping all of them. And this is also another planter. And if you're wondering what those stones are, I was recently, recently went to the seaside and I picked up these stones and these are my handy dandy pattern weights now quite heavy there are many of them and they're quite heavy and i knew this same metallic planter would come in handy in keeping them these are i think tea light tins i bought them from ikea but trust me i'm i'm sure to get a use for each and everything and i use this to keep my sharpie markers my highlighters and over inside here these are my sewing seam gauges I don't know whether it's seam gauges, but I use them mostly for my cover stitch machine when I want to know which mostly to help me with seam allowance and everything. And also when you're sewing on a curve on a sewing machine, they're magnetic so they can attach onto your sewing machine. And they're a good guide when you're sewing and you don't want to go past the seam allowance and more so if you're sewing in a curve. So I just keep them on the tin here since they're metallic. And inside here I've got actually this is a brilliant idea you know when you have to keep switching needles from your sewing machine and you don't want to mix them with new needles and then you end up using the same needle over and over again so whenever i change a needle or remove a needle from my machine i keep it here i know this is for the universal needle that i was meant to be using so right now a universal needle is in my sewing machine and this is i think i think this was a, a ballpoint needle so the one I removed moved and I used recently, I put it in here and I was using a three thread overlocking stitch. So I removed one overlocker stitch needle and I keep them here labeled so I know where to find them. And I just keep them in this tea, keep the place neat. This is just a poster for when I'm having a cup of tea. And this is my sewing table. And these tables are from Ikea. They are common Ikea tables, which come in handy. They're actually good. They've got, you just screw on the legs. And I think I should take you to my trolley. This, this is a multi-purpose trolley. Top of here, I've got my sewing book. 
my other notebook and this top trolley always has the projects I'm working on this I'm doing this for a patent test this I'm testing out something and under here I've got a project I've cut up that I need to sew up and over here this is a cotton boy fabric which i intend to use as my pressing cloth i know they recommend that most pressing clothes that i've seen are made out of silk or ganza i thought of buying a meter and i cut it up by myself but it for myself and have a few at hand but it did come off cheap so i realized that any natural fiber 100 percent natural fiber without any synthetics that could easily melt comes in handy so i intend to cut up this into two and pressing clothes and over here i've got my carbon tracing paper is that should i call it tracing paper no it's not tracing paper but you know what i mean i use them to mark that keep them under here there and in this bottom one i've got my ham and sausage i actually made this myself there's a pattern online and i used a wool the black is a wool fabric 100 percent wool and a cotton fabric on top this is an extension table from my overlocker and am i the only one who has those tins that never have cookies but they have sewing accessories and this comes in handy this towards my sewing feet the walking feet many of the sewing feet i keep them in this tin Trust me, I'm a queen of recycling. I'm sure to keep tins that I don't know what I'll use for. And also spare sewing feet I also kept in here. These are clear tins. I bought a set of five from Home Bargains and I use them to store sewing feet. So these are spare sewing feet. This is a sewing gauge. I, I showed it in my previous video. I use it for mark button holes. And I've got a hemming tape, double-sided tape, which helps me with hemming. A few things and under here i keep my recording things this stand. some of them i'm using them right now the tripod stand this is for my ipad and a few others a few tapes and things and this trolley is from hobby craft but ikea has a version then i've got glues here more pens chalk and marking things and this is my custom fit dress for my bootstrap patterns. I call her sister Leticia, that's the name we gave her in this house. And she's drafted to have my exact body measurements. I was happy to go with her because I rarely change in size. I think I still wear the same clothes I wore before I had kids, so I can fit into the same. No, I put on a little weight in some parts and I lost some weight, but yeah, in the other parts. But she's drafted your body measurements. You get they send you a chart where you enter all your measurements. So they send you a pattern that you cut up and draft. It's by far I could say this was the hardest sewing project I've ever undertaken because I had to match up the seams. This is my bust line, waist line, and a bust waist line and hip. And she's drafted to be like me. She also has this way back. So I, all those are measurements that you uh, were incorporated when they were making it. And I'm happy with I will try to attach a link to each and everything I'm showing you that I could remember. And also those that I'm not able to access, I will probably attach, include items where you can get similar items. Hope that makes sense. And let's move on to my bookshelf. In this corner I keep some papers, mostly pattern drafting papers really. And I think this is one of them and the few papers for to help me pattern drafting. I kept them in this corner and this was from IKEA. It helps to wire everything in. And these beautiful boxes, I bought them from The Works. If you're in the UK and they help me store a few things here and there. They're not labeled, so whenever I'm looking for something, I just jump for one and I check. This has just lingerie elastic sand and laces. And in here I keep my knitting and crochet hooks, needles and handy dandy things. I just thought they looked pretty and cute. And under here I've got my various laces, cords and cords and binding really. And I should have been sure each and every thing, but zippers over here. And I've got elastics in here. This has elastics. I tried to organize them, but that's the most I could do. And, and I've got some bias tape over here. 
Yeah. And over here I've got a few sewing books I'm really interested in that are of great interest to me. These are the sewing B books. I don't use most of them that much. These are my manuals, manuals of my machines. And probably the most treasured books in this cabinet are these pattern making books. I can't sum yet there on pattern making. This is one of the most important. I think it's the most expensive pattern sewing related book I've ever bought and I bought it eight years ago and that's pattern making for fashion design by Helen Joseph Armstrong it's a well recommended book if you want to go into pattern making and drafting and also if you can't get your hands on this this is another recommended one and it's the metric pattern cutting for women's wear by Winfred Aldrich this and also if you want to venture into children's pattern cutting, there's a children's version by Winfred Ondrich, and I think these are the recent issues. So I bought all of them because that's an area I want to venture into. And there's also another pattern making book for kids' books. So you wonder if my day was longer than 24 hours, these are things I would have achieved at some point in life. And under here, I've got knitting books. Just so you know, I'm a beginner knitter, but I've been advancing and buying books and doing a little bit of knitting. But these are knitting books, and this is just a pile with my other documents. And, it is, and these are a few magazines storage. These are sewing magazines. I've got a few October magazines, which I store in here. The La Maison Victor books magazines that come with patterns of tubery and i know you're wondering where my brother store magazines are and in this one i saw a few knit love sewing magazines knitting magazines these are knitting patterns that i bought recently some knitting magazines and a few crochet magazines and a few envelopes really and it's in these purple boxes I have Bada style magazines. I'm putting them on the floor because they're quite heavy. And the, here are the magazines. I'm trying to organize them in order. And I think this is not. I started buying them many years ago, then I returned to Africa. So this is from 2018, I could say, when I resumed serious sewing. And I've been missing a few here and there, but the few I've collected are in here. And I try to organize them in order. And I use file separators where I put each issue and I organize them in order so I know where to find them and yeah these are all the magazines I have I've got I think I have two on top there, two on there. and let's move on underneath here I've got mine is squeeze a bin under here so help me with this crap then this is an IKEA chair which is a plastic shell and swerving wheels and this is it a, a bin which collects everything i don't know where to put <laughs> it has yarn in there a few envelopes a few patterns i don't plan to use and on top of it i store my ufo project those projects that have been ignored for a number of years or seasons and inside here I store the kids printed patterns the ones i've traced off and i've got my tracing mats here actually they come in hand i use this the dining table to cut my fabric which is a bonus and also i've got this ironing board it's a small one from my here which i also lay on the dining table and put the iron there to use and underneath there in the corner i've got my old overlook a machine that needs to be repaired and that plastic bag collects scrap fabrics that are going to go into a proof of mine and over here i'm going to show you my patterns and these are my trust of patterns and i store them in these plastic bags which i bought from home bargains I always know which patterns I'm working with. I try to leave a name at the bottom. After I've cut them up, I store them in these clear bags. I don't bother labeling them because it will... I don't have that time really. So I know which patterns I'm working with and which patterns I've traced off so I can find them here. 
and also when i use like the big four patterns it's hard to squeeze them back in after you've opened them up or cut them up so i restore them here with also the trace of copies so i still trace off these patterns i know it will be make much sense if you can cut it out but i know most times i always need to go in between sizes so i do that and this has my most of the trace of patterns and i could show you another place where i store my patterns it's behind here I keep this big sleeve. <laughs> I saw it is literally goes behind this cabinet and this table. And I got this from Hobby Craft. And I saw a trace of patterns. When you trace of those patterns and they are quite big and it's quite big or cut up pattern. And they're so big to squeeze into the envelopes. So I squeeze them in here. So I'm able to keep them big and full and I store them in here. It's, I think it could be an A1 size, so it's quite big enough to store a lot of what I need to keep. And I also wanted something plastic that wouldn't that wouldn't get wet or anything should an accident happen that they wouldn't get wet on the floor. So they stand just in it here. It's a good storage system. And also that bin, that plastic bin comes in handy for storing my ironing board because I wouldn't want it on the floor lest it gets dirty. And now this is a final place I'm showing you and I'm going to show you this cabinet. And I'll show you this one first, inside this one first. And inside here, I keep my thread. I recently bought a square thread in packs. And this this drawer has my overlocker and cover stitch machine thread. I've got a few colors here I've collected over time. It's quite much of it, and I store it in here on top of this. So there's enough space for that. And underneath here, I keep my small thread and these little storage tea boxes. I bought a set of five. It was one set of five. Help keep my bobbins. And I also put spare thread in here. And more thread. And these boxes, I bought a collection of these and they help me keep the bigger threads, some of the bigger ones. But I try to color code them, keep them in matching colors so I know where to find them, the place in blue. I didn't do it perfectly well, but at least I know how my system works. Then I know which colors whenever I'm looking for others. So these, I've got four of these where I store the threads. And this is the entire collection. The small threads are kept in here. And then these are also stored in here and the bobbins are kept in here. And underneath here, these are all my printed patterns. I've got a few indie patterns. For most indie patterns, I prefer buying PDFs because they come off slightly cheap and I'm happy to print A4s and put them together. But these are the patterns that I know I would probably use in the future. I had a collection of many, but I'm planning to detach them off so they are stored in the plastic bin. And this bottom one, it collects a lot of things that I don't know where to put them. I've got bias tape binding, spare glue sticks as for patterns. Then these are button boxes that have probably an individual button. So they come in handy when you just need one button. <laughs> and I've got glue guns, a few pliers, snap pliers. Yeah, and this is how I've made do, make, made do with my sewing space. Just in case I forgot to show you this, this was a Tilly and the Buttons Christmas card which was given to me by a secret Santa and I decided to frame it and it looks cute, it's sewing room and I think that was the Clio, Tilly and the Buttons Clio and I thought it would be a, di a, add a different touch to my sewing space so I love it there and that's the final look of my sewing corner. And I retained this cabinet and this was, this is just above the stairs in the house and it's in my previous sewing room, in my son's room. For privacy purposes, I won't show you around his room, but I kept this cabinet, which I used to use to store my fabric. I kept my fabrics in there. 
sorry by my standard this is organized it might not be pinterest standard but i'm not being inspired by pinterest here but i know what i'm working with these are mostly woven fabrics and these are apart from these these are small pieces which are still usable for a top or something of woven this is a knit and these are my knits i know where to find them and these are also a few knit fabrics and over here i've got ribbing interfacing and and this is some cotton fabric some more fabric sweatshirting ponte sweatshirting and this is lining fabric and this idea i've got some fabric i hope to distash and also in this same room under the beds i've got three bins small bins where that's to our fabric some ha one has my denims and african knit fabric Af african wax print fabrics and a few little pieces which are still big but not big enough and yeah that's my storage solution this is the space i keep the fabrics upstairs at least i know i pick up only what i need and it's what i take downstairs i hope you've been inspired by my little sewing corner that i've had to make do to create a sewing space with just 65 and 85 inches square and how I've managed to use the different storage to store things and hope you've been inspired to make do with the little spaces that you have and if you're watching this video from another part of the world that's not the UK something for you to know UK houses are not the biggest I come from Africa where I was used to massive big houses so when you come to the UK you have to make do with the spaces that you have if you hear three bedroomed house it doesn't guarantee you massive space but I believe this can't stop you from crafting. And I realized the very first time I started sewing, I used to just pull out my sewing machine only when I'm ready to sew. I felt like I wasn't inspired. And the bonus with having this in the dining area is right next to the kitchen. Most times I'm in the middle of fixing dinner and I can still run back here, sew a seam or something. I just feel like this motivates me to sew more as opposed to before when I used to climb upstairs or feel lazy to go upstairs to lock myself in the room. So I'm quite next to the living space and uh, the dining area. I know the kids keep coming in and out and it's very easy to make do with this space. And also the dining space offers cutting space and also ironing space. So this is my sewing space. Let me know what you think. Is it something you're interested in? And if you have any questions about an item that I might not have listed at the bottom, let me know. But this is my sewing space and I'm actually excited about this little corner. And also having it exposed is a push to keep it neat. So I endeavor and try to keep it neat <laughs> quite often. But it's not a promise, not something I'll promise you. And thank you for watching. And if you've watched this video and you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to press the bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye.